and we're in this position, there's generally three things they can do. Now remember, everything we do from the underhook and pike is based on trying to see what are the, the highest percentage things that can occur. So from this position, if he lifts up and stands up, there's a moment in time where I'm gonna be able to read that. So when he's here and I've got him down, go ahead, I can read that coming up. Good. So the idea is once the person starts to move and respond to our pressure, we are ahead of them. So as he's coming up, it's very easy to grab clothing or even the trap muscle, lock, bring your elbow across, step out to the side and lean forward. Now I have to break his vertical plane as fast as possible because if I'm here, theoretically, he has to throw just as much. So what's buying me time is the actual system, what I have here. So as he's coming up, I have the head start to send him down this way. Once you send them down into anything from the triple threat, you get to that S position, which is what we ideally want to start with. So when he lifts up and I set him down, I can control his fall this way, but primarily with the underhook. So if I let him go, this is the friction. This is what's controlling the fall. If he puts his arm on the floor, I just need to back away to take him back to that S position where we started off from. So one more time, we have the underhook and pipe. As they lift up, that's the moment where I have to make my motion. As I come in here, my hands are on this shoulder. As I hit, and he starts to fall, this is what's carrying him, but this hand can adjust. As he comes down, I start bringing in my knees. If he posts at any point, which is also a natural high percentage thing people do, you walk away from the post while maintaining control of the shoulder, reaching for your wrist or elbow socket here. Okay? So that's very common that they stand up to you. The other thing that occurs is from this position is they try to get you in a headlock. Now, if you've done everything Ray has shown and you have a good bite on both of these things and you have a good set of, of pressure put on him here, once he starts pulling in, same thing. I've got a moment in time where I can see this happening and that's my chance to duck under. Once I duck under and I go for that body lock, I'm going in and I gotta keep my head up. So as I go here, I'm not looking down because he can get it to me. He can get a front choke, right? Once I'm in here and he starts squeezing my head, I'm basically using this window to duck under. So I'm gonna face that way first and make a turn. As I face this way, I immediately turn and then I'm going for harness or that body lock. So that's the second pressure you get from that. I'm in here, he starts squeezing, that's my chance. Face, stay tight, come around for the body lock or for my harness. That's the second energy. You can work these in any order. So he can stand up, go this way, he can squeeze my head and I'm going underneath. Each of those things, I'm ahead of him by one. Now, the last thing is, because his angle's down, I ideally want this 90, but sooner or later there's motion, he might get the idea of grabbing my leg or going for a tackle. When you do this move, it's so much like everything else we do, I'm guiding him, I'm moving him along. I'm not trying to force it. Yes, you can force it. But it's, the idea is that it works for everyone. So when he's going in, he's moving, I move my hips out, I hollow, and I start working around his head. As he's first chasing my feet, I let him chase, and he'll land right in that S. Different angle. So he's seeing this downward angle towards my legs. I'm gonna let him go down, I'm gonna move away, and spiral him out to that S. So those are our triple threats. Face me, Andrew, please. So when he swings at me, and I put in this helmet, and I circle and make this motion in here, that's my moment to call out what I need to call out. Instantly, if he moves in any one of these directions, there he goes, he's underneath and I'm putting pressure on him, or if he stands up, I'm moving this way, taking him right back, and if he goes for that headlock, I'm going underneath either for harness or body lock. With the inside, I need to push his head away, because one of the other main reasons we use the unbroken pipe is not only to control the torso, is everything we do with the ISR is about outflanking. We wanna get behind them or we wanna cut an angle, right? Makes sense? So this whole idea initially came from that. Now, over the years, everybody's seen this position thinking this has to, is a stagnant position. This is only stagnant and steady right here if they're compliant. If this person yields at that point, you're good to stay there and then manage them. You can control them however you like. With that said, the moment you're here, if they're still fighting, you enter that triple threat. How long are you sustaining this? What commands are you giving? Do you want to disengage? Do you want to move in? These are all the things it offers you. But originally, it was about if he hit and I crashed and I was in tight and I got that underhook, it was to immediately transition. So when I first started messing with the underhook and pipe, 
It wasn't about holding it static. It was the idea of, I'm in here and he swings, it was about crashing and that. It was just opening this to get you here. So underhook and pike, much like the harness, you work in tandem with body locks. Ideally, I want to go under. If I can't, there's a body lock. There's a body lock with my head behind, which is actually better, but you don't always have that luxury. That's why if your head's here and he's punching, you still want to be able to ratchet and get behind him. So my point in all that is, do not get tied into any one position with the ISR. You're talking about three techniques in three phases that are supposed to be moved across each one. They're supposed to transition between them. So if I'm in here and this isn't working and it's collapsing, it's time I get out of this. So whether it's stuffing this and transitioning to the other side, whether it's dealing with a punch incoming and shielding and then piking on this side, ducking behind as, as quickly as possible if you can, that's basically the strategy behind the underhook.